Have you ever wondered what goes into a good estate plan? Have you ever wondered what a custodian's role is and the fees that they might be charging? Have you ever wanted to understand what a supplemental insurance plan was when it comes to Medicare? Well, stay tuned because today we're going to be talking about all three of those things. Retiring Well, brought to you by Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning and serving all of Northern Michigan. Retiring Well, helping you plan for a successful and comfortable retirement. Retiring Well, plan to retire well. Hi, welcome to our show today. Now listen, um, in this segment, I want to talk about estate planning. At, retire, at Centennial Wealth, there's a number of things that we do. One is obviously wealth management, but we also do income planning, we do tax planning, we do long-term care health care planning, and we do estate planning. Now, when we do estate planning, we're not attorneys, but we can talk to our clients about estate planning, but then what typically we will do is bring a, an attorney alongside to, you know, to fill the gap to prepare those legal documents that are necessary for that estate planning. So um, I want to make that disqualification, that, qual that disqualification right away. I'm not an attorney, and if you want to have some estate planning, I, I, I suggest that you talk to an attorney. But listen, we can talk in generality so I can kind of give you an idea of the kind of things that you're going to want to talk about when it comes to your estate planning. First of all, a, a good estate plan for all practical purposes is one whereby your, your assets know where to go. Um, they avoid probate. You know, if you have an asset that doesn't know where to go when you pass away, it's got to go through probate, and then it, and then it, they, they transfer title accordingly. Now, another thing that, you know, a good estate plan will do is avoid estate taxes. But this is getting kind of a, a, a lesser item anymore because a, a couple, for all practical purposes, can pass on now about $22 million in assets without any estate tax. Um, now, the only exception to that would be IRA because that's money that's never been taxed. So in estate planning, trying to avoid estate taxes is, for most of us, let's face it, um, it it's not, that's not a big issue anymore. But the other thing you want to look at is, what if I'm in incapacitated? You know, who's going to make my financial decisions for me? Well, this is something a, a good estate plan will address because you'll actually have a power of health, you know, a power of financial, right? Um, it's, a, it's a document that says so-and-so is going to make financial decisions for me in, in the event that I can't make them for myself. What about health care? What if I can't make decisions for myself regarding my, my health? Well, again, we're going to now want to have a power of health care document that's going to let somebody know this person is going to make those decisions for me in the event that I can't make them for myself. Now, a lot of people will say, Larry, I got a will. I think I'm all set. Well, first of all, you, you may have a will, but if you don't have that power of financial and health care, you're going to miss a couple things there. But you have to understand, a will only sees the light of day if anything goes through probate. Now think about that. Um, the, the, the will becomes the instruction manual for probate because it tells everybody out there, hey, if I haven't designated this ahead of time, in, in the event that I pass away and this is going to probate, here's where I want my assets to go. So if you have a good estate plan that avoids or, or has assets that know where to go, the will may never see the light of day. But the, most attorneys are going to tell you, hey, you still, still should have one just in case some assets got missed. Now, another one that a lot of people ask, Larry, do I need a trust? It used to be that, you know, if you, if you wanted to have your house know where to go, for, for example, you could put the house in the trust, and then when you passed away, because that trust, trust is kind of a living, breathing thing, right? It lives on beyond you, then the trust would not have to go, or the house would not have to go through probate. It would be, it would be determined in the trust and could be sold within the trust and then distributed to the, the beneficiaries. Today, though, they have what they call a ladybird deed meaning you can put language right in the deed, doesn't change your ownership in any way, doesn't you know, change the way you can use the property. Matter of fact, you, you can still sell it if you want. But it just simply says, it's like setting a beneficiary designation on it. It says that, hey, when we pass away, here's where we want it to go. Completely avoids probate because your heirs just simply take the, the certified death certificate down to the, the, the deed office and basically change title completely avoids probate. So now you don't need a trust necessarily for that. 
But here might be an area where you might need a trust. Um, let's say I have a, a, you know, a younger beneficiary, um, and if they got a lump sum of money, they may not know how to handle it, and I might be concerned about that. Well, maybe through a trust I can say, hey, I want my, my money to go to the trust, but I want that beneficiary to wait till maybe they're a certain age where they might be able to handle it better. Well, now the only way I can do that is maybe through a trust. All right, listen, I know I've given you a lot in just a very short segment, but these are things that you, you, know, you wanna get taken care of. It's a proven fact that the older you get, the less likely you are to have these things done. So we encourage you, if you don't have an estate plan, give us a call. We'd love to at least sit down and talk with you, kind of give, give you an idea of the kind of things you might need, bring alongside to, an attorney to maybe help you with some of those docs, so you have a good estate plan. So I encourage you, give us a call. You know, Larry, what a, what a great episode, uh, segment that you did there on estate planning. You know, I think uh, often folks come in and they, when we bring up estate planning, they think, boy, that's something I've been wanting to do for a long time. That's something that's been on my mind, but they always tend to put it on the back burner. Even though it's something that's so important, they know it's important, but yet when you're sitting there thinking about your all the stuff you have to do, it tends to fall back to the back of the list and it doesn't get revisited as often as it should have. You know, one thing here at Centennial Wealth that we do is constantly keep that front of mind. We recognize the importance of estate planning, not only for you, but what about all those loved ones left behind? Or maybe you're philanthropic in nature and you want to leave money. It's really important that you have that identified and laid out, you know, and that we stay on top of that. Yeah, and Art, it makes me think of back in back in the day, Art and I, believe it or not, at Traverse City West Middle School, he was the center, I was the quarterback, and I look at it of, you know, being the quarterback of the team and ultimately trying to figure out with that retirement plan, is estate planning is a key piece of that. And so it's, it's really important when you're going into retirement or in retirement to have that estate plan matching up with your income plan, your investment plan, tax plan, all of those different areas, uh, all working together. Yeah, guys, listen, in the next segment, we're gonna be talking about the custodian's role, right? A lot of people understand they got the advisor, they got the investment management company, possibly mutual fund company, and then there's a custodian. Who are they, right? So mm -hmm. in the next segment, I'm gonna talk a little bit more about that, so stay tuned. Today's retirement challenges can be mastered. Knowledge is power because you can confidently plan ahead and make educated financial decisions for a successful and comfortable retirement. We are Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning, serving all of Northern Michigan with offices in Traverse City, Cadillac, Petoskey, and Gaylord. And we invite you to an informative and exciting live event with a complimentary gourmet dinner. You'll learn highlights of the new Tax Reform Act, the difference between the fiduciary and suitability standard of care, how an IRA gets taxed to a surviving spouse, what a bull market is and how long it can last, and much more. Call 888-608-5825 to register and choose the date and location that works best for you. Wednesday, September 18th, or Thursday, September 26th, at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. The live event starts at 6 p.m. and is free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow, but seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 to reserve your seats today. There is no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important live event. Educated financial decisions. Call 888-608-5825. 5825 today. Are you drawing closer to retirement or already retired? Do you feel confident that you have a plan in place for your retirement? At Centennial Wealth Advisory, we believe there are a number of areas within your retirement plan that must be working together. It's very important that you have a long-term income plan. You don't want to run out of money in retirement. And we believe that tax planning should go hand in hand with your income planning. So we have our very own accountant on the team to assist you. We also believe that you need to have your estate planning in order to ensure that your assets are left behind to your loved ones and or charities. Along with that comes insurance planning, whether that's life or health. Along with all of this obviously comes your investment planning, which you need to have confidence will help you accomplish your goals and objectives. As you can see, there's a number of areas that you need to be taking into consideration when it comes to your retirement planning. 
We'd love the opportunity to share with you how we approach all of these areas within your retirement plan. Please call the number on your screen. Okay, in this segment, we wanna talk about custodians. Now, what is a custodian's role? What is their function per se? Well, a custodian's role is basically to hold your assets, okay? Very important, not only hold your assets, but report to you everything that's going on in the account. Now, there's a number of different custodians out there. There's, you know, I'll just name a few. There's TD Ameritrade. You could have an account, with a, you could use Charles Schwab as a custodian. You could use Fidelity as a custodian. But this is gonna be somebody that's holding your assets and reporting to you everything that's going on that account. Very, very important. Now, why is that important? Because, listen, you don't want to have what's called like a Bernie Madoff situation, right? What went wrong in that case? Well, people wrote checks to Bernie's company, right? Bernie took possession of those funds and then was doing the reporting back at the same time to, to, to the parties. Well, what was going on and what he was reporting were two different things. So very important, if you're going to be working with somebody in the invest, investment management field, that there's always a third party out there acting as a custodian that's holding the assets, again, reporting to you everything that's going on in the account so that they're, so you know and, and you have the transparency of seeing, hey, you know, there's no, you know, funny things going on here. What I have is what I have. Now, you got to understand, too, that when you're working with these kind of accounts, there could potentially be fees. All right, if there's a management company and they're making trades, well that custodian, they've got to make money, right? So they're typically going to make their money by the trading fees. So let's say you've got an investment manager, he's, he's buying one stock, selling another. Well, what's the cost of that? Well, you're going to want to know that. All right, because different custodians charge different fees under different situations. So it's going to be very important. You want that custodian, but what's their role? What's their fees going to be in that? Now, a lot of custodians, people will close an account and they'll get hit with this, this uh, end fee. All right, or what they call a closing fee. Well, a lot of custodians, especially if they're dealing with IRAs, right, have to report at the end of the year on some 1099 whether you did a rollover from a custodian to custodian or you took a distribution. All right, well, meaning you'd had the money come out of the IRA to yourself. Because of this reporting requirement at the end of the year, they will typically want to charge you a closing fee to close the account. Maybe $50, maybe $75, um, but you, you know you're going to have that. But for the most part, other than those closing fees, usually you're just going to have a trading fee. Now, a lot of these custodians um, have a retail side. Now, I mentioned earlier, Charles Schwab. You know, now they, they, you might be a custodian under one situation, but they also have a retail side. So uh, just the same with uh, uh, Fidelity. They have a retail side. So just because I might be working with them as a custodian doesn't necessarily mean I'm working with them on the retail side of things. So for example, Fidelity has their own funds. All right, they have their own managers. Well, I may, not, I may or may not be working with that side, but knowing the relationship is gonna be very, very important. Now, there's other parties involved in the whole investment relationship. Um, you know, you've got the custodian holding your assets, but now you have an advisor. Okay, the advisor, what's the, what's the advisor's role in this? What are they doing for you? What are they charging? Very important to know. Um, are, they ba are they charging a fee based on the assets that are under management? Or are they selling you something and they get, a, they get maybe a commission up front? There's a lot of mutual funds, that could be a whole segment in itself, where they're front loaded, meaning you know, the advisor's gonna recommend a mutual fund and there's gonna get a, get a commission up front. So you're gonna get charged uh, free. That's how the advisor is getting paid. Knowing how the advisor gets paid is very important. Are they getting a commission? Are they getting a percentage based on the, based on the assets that they're managing? Now, and then you gotta understand if I'm dealing with mutual funds, they're charging fees, all right? So what are, what are those fees that they're charging? So is the advisor charging? Is he getting a commission? Are charging a percentage of those funds that he's, that he's managing underneath? And then those funds, what are they charging? There's a lot of parties to this whole investment relationship and knowing exactly who is playing what role and what the fees are each one is charging is very important. 
So I encourage you, we actually have the ability to get behind any portfolio and extrapolate all those fees so you see exactly what you're paying. Don't you think you have a right to know? Well, if you, if you want to know, please give us a call. Really good information there, Larry, and, and a lot of times people aren't really familiar with the custodian, what sort of role they play, but just as important with that is understanding for your advisor and, and ultimately what services they're going to be providing for, for what, they're, what they're ultimately doing within your account. So there may be different areas that they'd be talking to you about, specifically about tax planning. Uh, we talked about earlier on the show, maybe talking about estate planning and, and some of those other areas that are very important are when you when it comes to retirement planning and, and so vital from from our perspective at Centennial Well. No, it's absolutely true. And one of the things often we see here, guys, is that that come in as somebody that has life insurance, you know, different from their investment portfolio, maybe something they got as a younger person or in a family and they've just held on to it. You know, that's structured totally different. You then your fees are going to be different. What are you getting for that? Obviously, if it's life insurance, you're getting a death benefit. Well, you're not and your family would sure. be right. But that's the co there's going to be different costs associated with that. Typically, the agent in that record is paid by a commission from the life insurance company, but there are other fees for the cost of insurance and stuff that comes about with those policies. Guys, I'm actually surprised how many people don't know what they're paying in fees, right? I mean, um, how many times have we asked them, hey, what are you paying You know, your, your money managers? And they have no clue. We actually have the ability to get behind any portfolio and tell you exactly what you're paying in fees. So I encourage you to give us a call. Let us take a look at that for you. Make sure that you're not paying any unwanted fees. Let's just put it that way. All right, in the next segment, guys, we're gonna have Dawn join us, and she's gonna be talking about Medicare supplement plans. You know, when you turn age 65, you know, they get inundated with mail. You might even get somebody stopping at your door, right, trying to, to sell you supplement insurance plans. And wading through all that information could be kind of complex. So having somebody that can help you with that is very, very important. So we're gonna have Dawn join us, talk more about that. Stay tuned. In this segment, we want to talk about Medicare. Now, believe it or not, when you turn age 65, the whole world knows about it. And in that year, you're going to get inundated with all kinds of mail. Um, you may even have people showing up at your doorstep <laughs> to talk about Medicare. But what, what, what is good happening here? Well, with Medicare, you have, you qualify at age 65 and you get what's called Part A and Part B. Now, Part A is simply hospitalization coverage. Part B is outpatient coverage. Now, you have to understand with Medicare, it's going to cover about 80% of the cost, but there's gaps in the coverage. We'll call that just, you know, the 20%. And if I want to get those gaps covered, I'm going to have to have what's called a supplemental plan. Okay, something that's just going to come alongside Medicare Part A and B, and it's going to fill all those gaps so that I can have closer to 100% coverage. Okay, now what a lot of people don't understand is there's two different routes you can go. Okay, one route you can go for supplemental insurance is what we call the Medigap route. Okay, now this is government regulated. There's a number of different plans. They go from A to Z. And some are in force, some are not in force, some come and go. But you have to understand with all these plans, they're all regulated. So for example, if I have a Medigap plan K, then that's gonna be the same for everybody. There's gonna be no difference. So it's, it's a lot simpler in that regard because I know what my coverage is gonna be. Now, 
the, one of the disadvantages to having a Medigap plan is that I have to get what's called prescription, you know, uh, drug or what they call Part D has to be a separate plan. Okay, it's not included in my Medigap plan. The other thing that's not going to be included in my Medigap plan is I may be dental insurance. If that's something I want, then that's going to have to be a different plan. Now, one of the other disadvantages with a Medigap plan is although they're all regulated, they have to be the same, no insurance company has to charge the same price. <laughs> So this is something that on a periodic basis, you're gonna wanna get shopped. Because if I've got part K, let's say I got a Medigap plan K with one insurance company, but with another insurance company, the same exact plan might be cheaper, then I'm gonna wanna know that, right? So a lot of people, they get, it, they get their plan and then they never look at it again. And this is really something that, you know, every so often should be shopped. No different than your home insurance or your car insurance to see if maybe you can get a, a, a cheaper amount. Now, the other route you can go is what's called the Advantage Plan route. Okay, now again, this is just supplemental insurance. Now, why they call them an Advantage Plan is simply this. It has all of these. It has eye and dental, it has prescription, all rolled into one plan. But the disadvantage is, is it's not regulated. They don't have to be the same. So I can have one Advantage plan with one insurance company and have another one with the, another insurance company and they're gonna be completely different. This kind of goes back to when we used to have to shop our health insurance, right? Um, you know, Blue Cross's plan might not be the same as priorities. And so we had to compare those plans to see not only from a cost standpoint, but we had to see what the coverage was to see which one kind of made the best sense for us. So, you've, you know, you got these two different ways to go and, and what's best for you is going to be determined on what kind of coverage you want. You know, if you're going to be a traveler, you're going to be somebody maybe traveling around and you want, you want out, out of uh, state, cover, you know, health insurance coverage, uh, maybe another doctor's plan, then depending on what route you go, <laughs> that could be a big difference. What if I'm somebody that travels out of country? You know, um, what kind of a plan do I want that might cover that? So a lot of it is gonna be based on your lifestyle, but it's something that you wanna be able to check into. So I encourage you, if you're somebody that's got a plan out there, hasn't been looked at in some time, and you think maybe you might be somebody that might be uh, able to save some dollars, then give us a call, we'd be glad to give you a quote. forward to helping you plan to retire well. Today's retirement challenges can be mastered. Knowledge is power because you can confidently plan ahead and make educated financial decisions for a successful and comfortable retirement. We are Centennial Wealth Advisory, financial advisors specializing in retirement planning, serving all of Northern Michigan with offices in Traverse City, Cadillac, Petoskey, and Gaylord. And we invite you to an informative and exciting live event with a complimentary gourmet dinner. You'll learn highlights of the new Tax Reform Act, the difference between the fiduciary and suitability standard of care, how an IRA gets taxed to a surviving spouse, what a bull market is and how long it can last, and much more. Call 888-608-5825 to register and choose the date and location that works best for you. Wednesday, September 18th, or Thursday, September 26th, at Boone's Long Lake Inn in Traverse City. 
The live event starts at 6 p.m. and is free to attend with a complimentary gourmet dinner to follow. But seating is limited and fills quickly. Call 888-608-5825 to reserve your seats today. There is no cost and no obligation. Don't miss this important live event. Educated financial decisions. Call 888-608-5825 today. A lot of good information there talking about health insurance and what that looks like when you get to age 65 and older when it comes to Medicare. And, and again, one of the things that we like to, to look at is all those different areas of retirement. So we're not just talking about investments. Uh, we're looking at taxes. We talked about estate planning earlier. Um, and, and one of those major areas that we've seen change a lot over recent years is health insurance. And, and we sort of look at it. That's why we have Dawn here on the show with us is, is looking Looking at it prior to age 65, that that segment, and then also when you get to age 65 and older with Medicare. And so, Don, you've been having some conversations with, with folks lately, and if you don't mind, maybe share a little bit about what you've experienced there. Yeah, a lot of what I've been experiencing so far is I've had several people come in just prior to 65, just for that education piece. What is Medicare? I'm getting flooded with mail. I'm getting phone calls. I'm having people come to my door trying to talk to me about Medicare. I don't know what to do with all this. What sure. you know? So a lot of it has been just an educational piece of trying to set the road. Um, the other piece that is fun for me is the people who are over 65 and maybe already have that Medicare supplement plan to be able to sit down premiums rise over the years if you've had the same supplemental plan for two years or more those premiums continue to rise and rise and rise so some of the most uh, enjoyable times that I've had with clients is coming in sit down we run a quick quote in less than really five minutes time and sometimes up to $50 per individual. I had a couple come in, I was gonna be able to save them $110 per month. That's a fun conversation to have with a client. So right. yeah, so those are, those are just a few examples. Yeah, Don, I really appreciate that. You know, you're a health insurance agent and us as financial advisors can really appreciate your job, especially when you're saving somebody money, right? Yeah. I mean, as anybody, they, they want that. If that, you're getting the same coverage for less dollars, hey, that's a win. But the thing that always amazes me and you know, when you and I have worked together on some cases and, and tried to help some folks is how um, many cases people don't align their retirement plans or financial plans with their health insurance. And especially those before 65 years, then you know that can play a role on the dollar amount for premium, right? Absolutely, yeah. Your income plan, which you guys do great with, fits right into that prior to 65. And, and you really wanna watch how much income because those tax subsidies that, the, that you can get for your health insurance really plays a big factor upwards of a thousand dollars per month difference yeah no that Don, that's that's really great information if you're sitting out there today watching and you don't feel that you have a holistic approach to your retirement plan give us a call here at centennial wealth advisory we'd love to sit down walk through that with you and get you on the right track so you can retire well